Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is Google Cloud VMware Engine 109, vSphere for GCP Admins, Part 1. So I'm going to talk about the vSphere ESXi hypervisor in this video, um, and it's going to be specifically aimed at GCP admins, because one of the comments that I've, I've got back from filming these videos is that much to my surprise, it's not just VMware administrators and VMware engineers and architects that are watching these videos. There are actually uh, people who are more cloud architects or GCP administrators. So I thought I might, instead of assuming know how every, that everybody knows how v, VMware and vSphere works, I might just do a, a short set of videos for people who are watching this because they're a GCP admin that wants to know more about VMware and vSphere. So I'm going to start with um, a server. I've just got one server and I'm going to put a hypervisor on it so that the uh, compute, the CPU and the memory part of it, the storage and the networking can be abstracted and pooled. Um, and that the piece of software that VMware use for that is called vSphere ESXi. You will hear it called vSphere ESXi, sometimes just vSphere, sometimes just ESXi. And if you've been using vSphere for a long time, some people still call it ESX, even though the name changed probably over 10 years ago. But what that will allow you to do is build virtual machines on top of that pooled and abstracted hardware. And if you've got a single server, the way that you manage that is by hitting a web page that's running on the server using something called the host client. So that's how you'd manage a simple uh, one server setup by using a host client, by, hit, by pointing a web browser directly at that box on its IP address and managing it through the host client to see all the local resources and virtual machines. So that works fine for one. But as soon as you get to two hosts and maybe three hosts, the fact that we've now got separate management interfaces for each one becomes a problem. And the fact that these virtual machines can only be moved around or configured on an individual host and you can't do things like move them around or migrate them or vMotion, which is the ability to move one whilst it's running from one host to another, um, that becomes a bit of a problem. So. What we end up doing is, is we still have that same software running on the host and it still has virtual machines. So it's exactly the same piece of software we had as before, but what we set up is something called a vCenter server. So this is a dedicated management console for managing one or more vSphere hosts. So not only does it make the management simpler, but it now creates a single platform out of these three individual hosts so that we can manage things together, view them as a whole and move things around or backwards and forwards on a single platform. So that's why you would use vCenter Server, but it's also the single point of management for all the other VMware products, things like vSAN, NSX, vROPS, pretty much everything you're going to do with vCenter Server. Um, unless you've got a single standalone host is going to go through vCenter server. And this is the thing that, you know, kind of, I think it's, it was half a million uh, VMware certified professionals. I think it's more like 700,000 worldwide people have taken exams and learned how to manage VMware environments through vCenter server. So if I want to break that down into how I think about it logically or how you should think about it logically. Um, if we start at the top with the vCenter server, which manages all the resources, we have a, a software construct that we create inside that called the data center. So it's just um, a grouping inside vCenter server. And once I've got a data center, I can then create things called clusters. And again, a cluster is just another way of grouping things. So there's a there's a hierarchy here. Inside vCenter, you create a data center. Inside data centers, you create clusters. And in each cluster, I'll assign one or more vSphere hosts. So in cluster one, I've got four vSphere hosts all working together as a single cluster. Um, and in cluster two, I'm gonna put 16 in there. So I've now got four hosts in cluster one and 16 hosts in cluster two. And when I put them all together, uh, I'm going to call that an SDDC, a software defined data center. This isn't 100% accurate to say um, that this is exactly what an SDDC is, but every time you hear somebody mention an SDC, I would pretty much guarantee there's going to be at least one vCenter server with at least one data center and at least one cluster with at least one host. But that's the, even if it's not entirely correct, that's a good way of thinking about what an SDDC is or uh, what boundaries or how you wrap up all that stuff into a thing. So an SDDC, Software Defined Data Center, that's what VMware people will talk about when they're doing VMware, uh, sorry, 
Google Cloud VMware Engine, they'll be building an SDDC, but on Google Cloud Platform hardware and infrastructure. So just to summarize that again, in that particular diagram, we've got one SDDC inside the red box. We've got one vCenter server in which we've created a software construct called the data center, in which we've created two more software con software constructs called clusters and in those clusters that's where we logically place our hosts and cluster one's got four vSphere hosts cluster two has got 16 vSphere hosts so that's a logical grouping of how you should think about a VMware SDDC or software defined data center now just to show you in a bit more detail, I've got a screenshot from one of my other videos. Unfortunately, I've chopped the vCenter server off the top, if only I could scroll up on that screen, but I'm going to show you another one. But you can see that this data center is just an object that has underneath it a cluster. So I've got cluster one there, and I've got cluster two there, and you can see that under cluster one, I've got three ESXi hosts in this example, and they're all the virtual machines that are running on those hosts. And in cluster two, I've got another vSphere host, with a, uh, another couple of virtual machines running on that. So this is what vCenter um, v server looks like to a VMware administrator. Now if I, I pick a better example or a better diagram, you can see here, this is just a replication of that panel there. You can now see I've actually got my vCenter server at the top with a data center with a cluster, and that cluster's got vSphere hosts in them and virtual machines. I've got another cluster in the same data center with one host and then some more virtual machines. And I've also done something else here. I've got another vCenter server. So I'm using something here called linked mode, which is where I link one or more vCenter servers together. And this is the kind of thing you might do if you've got a dual data center environment and you put um, one vCenter server in one data center and you have another vCenter server in another data center with another a data center object with clusters and hosts underneath, but you can view them all from the same management console or management plane. So that's what vCenter server looks like if you've never, uh, the, sorry, the management console for vCenter server looks like uh, if you've never seen it before. If you want to find more about uh, more out about these kinds of things, the majority of my channel is actually just VMware videos and uh, things around vCenter and uh, vSphere. Um, so you'll find, I think I've got about another 70 or 80 videos like this. So the example here, here's a video on installing vCenter server. Here's another example video about installing NSXT or networking product on top of vCenter server. So if you want to know more about VMware and vSphere, just check out the other videos on my channel. And then for the summary or the uh, the elevator pitch, if somebody asks you um, to describe uh, a VMware SDDC, I would hope you would remember from this, the SDDC is you know, generally a vCenter server with one or more data centers, with one or more clusters, and inside those clusters being one or more vSphere hosts. So that's, that's the way you should think in your head of grouping all that VMware stuff into an SDDC or software-defined data center. So thank you very much for your time, and I hope you found that useful.